The Motorola One Fusion Plus is a well-built phone with eye-catchy paint and notch-free screen. Since it's a budget device, a few cuts had to be made on the way, but everything has come together nicely in the end. The Motorola One Fusion Plus packs a 6.5-inch IPS LCD screen with extended 1080p resolution and 20 by 9 aspect ratio. The black levels of the One Fusion Plus screen turned out quite good, and overall the panel offers an excellent contrast. Color reproduction is consistently good on the One Fusion Plus. The panel has no cutouts whatsoever and it is protected by a piece of Corning Gorilla Glass. It is powered by the Snapdragon 730 chip, one of the most popular upper mid-range chipset from Qualcomm. The Indian version of the Fusion Plus runs on the Snapdragon 730G chip, which has a minor difference in the GPU clock but otherwise identical to the 730. Both chips also have the same Adreno 618 GPU. The One Fusion Plus is sold in only one configuration with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. This phone has a quad camera on its back with three snappers and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. There is a 64 megapixel primary shooter, an 8 megapixel ultra wide snapper, and a 5 megapixel macro imager. A single LED flash is around if you ever need it. The photos have excellent contrast and dynamic range and true to life colors. There is no visible noise whatsoever. The sharpening is one bit more aggressive than we would have preferred, but it does not ruin the overall great quality. Night vision is available on the main camera of the One Fusion Plus and it does a fabulous job in making a night picture bright, colorful and contrasty. It pops more detail in highlights and shadows and makes for a bright night photo. The selfie camera on the Motorola One Fusion Plus is on Motorola's pop-up module and it rises every time you switch to selfie mode. The snapper has a 16 megapixel sensor. This device records 4K video at 30 fps. All videos feature stereo audio with 256kbps bitrate. The 4K footage from the main camera has good detail. The Motorola One Fusion Plus packs a massive 5000mAh battery which should last you for more than 2 days of normal uses. Nokia 7.2 will be launched in 2019. The phone comes with a 6.3 inch LCD touchscreen display with an aspect ratio of 19 by 9. It is powered by octa core Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 14nm processor. It comes with 6GB of RAM. As far as the cameras are concerned, the Nokia 7.2 on the rear packs triple camera setup consisting of a 48 megapixel main shooter and a 8 megapixel ultra wide lens along with a 5 megapixel depth sensor. There is a 20 megapixel camera on the front for selfies. This device is based on Android 9.0 Pi and packs 128GB of inbuilt storage that can be expanded via microSD card up to 512GB. It is powered by a 3500mAh battery with 10W fast charging support. With every new model, Realme changes the design of the back and for the 6 Pro, we now have a lightning inspired design in either blue or orange. The glossy finish of the back makes this phone very slippery but thankfully it's Gorilla Glass 5. The Realme 6 Pro features a 6.6 inch LCD display with a dual punch hole cutout. The 6.6 inch LCD panel on the Realme 6 Pro is capable of 90Hz refresh rate and you can switch between 60Hz and 90Hz from settings or leave it on auto and let the software decide. Even though this isn't an AMOLED panel, we found the colors and brightness to be more than adequate. Realme is proud of the fact that the Realme 6 Pro is the world's first phone to feature the Snapdragon 720G mobile chipset. The Snapdragon 720G is a powerful chip, so as expected general uses and multitasking was handled superbly. Actual gaming performance is pretty solid too. PUBG Mobile ran smoothly at relatively high graphics setting. Battery drain was under 10% after a 30 minute watch which is good and there wasn't much heating either. The Realme 6 Pro is available in three versions, one with 6GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, another with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, and the top-end variant with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. The Realme 6 Pro has a similar rear camera setup to the Realme 6, but with the depth camera swapped for a telephoto camera. There is a 64MP primary sensor and 8MP ultra-wide camera, a 12 megapixel telephoto camera with 2x optical zoom and 20x hybrid zoom and a 2 megapixel macro camera. In the front we have a 16 megapixel primary camera and a second 8 megapixel wide angle camera. 
you will be happy with the landscapes and close up shots with the Realme 6 Pro during the day. Distant objects have fairly good details, colors are well represented, and HDR works very well. Photos captured by the telephoto camera were decent too. In low light, the primary camera is pretty capable and manages a fair bit of detail with good colors. We were quite impressed with the quality and detail in photos taken with the front cameras. The wide angle camera is great for taking a group selfie and you can even shoot videos with it but night mode only works on the main selfie camera. The 6 Pro also supports slow motion selfies with the primary selfie camera. The Realme 6 Pro can shoot videos at up to 4K but only at 30 FPS. Video quality is generally good at 4K but if you are moving a lot then it's best to stick to 1080p resolution. The Realme 6 Pro packs in a respectable 4300 mAh battery with the support for 30W fast charging. The 6 Pro delivers a solid day and a half of battery life even with heavy uses. The 30W fast charger manages to charge the battery from 0 to about 90% in an hour which again is very quick. The Redmi Note 9 Pro Max is the new top of the line phone in the lineup. The back display as well as the cameras are protected by Corning Gorilla Glass 5. P2i splash resistance is also present. The display is 6.67 inches across and has a resolution of 2400 by 1080. It's an LCD panel with a pinch hole for the selfie camera in the center. But the refresh rate is only 60Hz. The power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner. On the inside, the Note 9 Pro Max is powered by the new Snapdragon 720G chipset, which is a 8nm processor. It comes with two variations, 6GB of RAM plus 64GB of storage or 8GB of RAM with 128GB of internal storage. The GPU is also powerful enough to play PUBG on high graphical settings, plus the combination of 8nm chipset and the massive 5020mAh battery makes the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max an ideal smartphone for extended PUBG gaming sessions. The other big change comes with the cameras as the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max has a new quad camera arrangement consisting of a 64 megapixel primary camera followed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter, a bigger 5 megapixel macro lens and a 2 megapixel depth sensor for portraits. The front camera uses a 32 megapixel sensor. Raw image capture is also possible now. The device can also record 4K videos at 30 fps and super slow mo videos at 960 fps. Xiaomi also includes a super detailed Pro mode in the camera app which works even in video mode. It also works with the ultra wide angle sensor and the macro camera. This Pro mode is far better than what you get in some other more expensive flagship smartphones. Pictures are sharp, detailed and color accuracy is very good. Overall this is a great camera phone. The battery is rated at 5020mAh and also supports 33W fast charging over USB type support which will take the phone from 0 to 50% in under 30 minutes. The Galaxy M31s has the same plastic construction as its siblings, but Samsung has opted for a gradient finish at the back this time around to make the phone stand out. The plastic doesn't feel cheap in the hand, the M31s basically uses the same build materials as a It comes with 6 or 8 GB of RAM and 128 GB of storage options. 